about to have some fun out here. We're out behind the shop where all the bad kids hang out, and that's kind of what we're doing now. We're going to be messing with this system, which is actually cooling the building inside uh, where there is a classroom currently, and we just don't care because we want to have some fun. So that's what we're doing right now. And you guys are going to join us. It's going to be a long video, so hang out, see what happens. So I just wanted to ask, this is all your idea. So why? What, what are you wanting to figure out here? What are you trying to prove to yourself? I wanted to see this in a real world application. We've been running it all day for the last two days on a coil that simulates a five ton unit. Um, the 2CFM has worked wonderfully on that coil, uh, lasted multiple pull downs on that coil on a single battery pack, um, no charging of the battery except for initial. And um, it's done wonderful on what would be considered a dry system in my opinion as a technician. Mm -hmm. um, to relate that to a system that's got some oil, it might have moisture in it, this unit's been open multiple times in training. Um, so I'd like to see it in more of a average situation for my tech in the field. Okay. So that's what we're going to represent here today. So what's our process? What are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and uh, recover all the refrigerant out of the system. We are going to open it briefly to the outside air. Um, and then we are going to go ahead and put on our 2CFM battery powered Navec pump. Mm -hmm. And um, we are going to start an evacuation and we are going to see how long it takes to get down to a vacuum. So you're going to pull a vacuum on the whole, uh, on the whole compressor. System. All right. All right. Well, let's get this started as soon right. as possible, and we'll keep chatting afterwards. Andrew, tell us what this recovery machine is. They just have an automatic shut off. This, what, what, what is there, it? There's a couple options there for that okay. that you can program. Uh, for different different levels of vacuum, you can have it behave differently. You can have it alert you with an audible alarm. You can have it automatically kick off for you if you're not there. There's a couple different options in the manual, and you can select which, which you know would be your preference. So, right. Yeah. So this is our NRD C4M. Um, again, you know, we was talking with the guys here a few minutes ago. This is a little bit of a, a mismatched application. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a dual compressor, four-cylinder, three-fan recovery machine uh, with application intentions, you know, in the heavy commercial, maybe yeah. industrial space, uh, chillers, uh, large rooftop equipment, BRF, stuff like that. So, yeah, and so we just walked by some of the booths and displays out here, and we're just grabbing stuff off the shelf, and he was nice enough to let us use his stuff to kind of demonstrate oh, yeah, it's gonna be off fun. the unit. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's kind of a neat juxtaposition, right? So mm -hmm. we've got kind of our, our monster here. Uh, with our baby. Yep. So, yeah. We'll see, we'll see how that works out. Maybe it all evens out in the end. I don't know. I love it. We've already pulled out four and a half pounds of refrigerant and uh, we're nearing the vapor phase of the refrigerant now. All right. Four and a half pounds out. Did anybody notice, notice the start time? Start time on the start? Yeah, you can hear it. How many seconds are we into this? <laughs> Does it say? Go into the live stream? Yeah. Um, three minutes and 43 yeah. seconds. Oh, yeah. 413.6. So we're at like five pounds pretty pretty right away. And so we actually have a micron gauge on our pump that we're going to show you. We're going to test this thing first. And so we're going to turn it on, and that's how we're going to check our oil. It's and nice if it pulls right down there. to what the vacuum's rated for, we got clean oil. And um, this has been used a couple times already today. The oil that's in it, the vacuum. Uh, so we're going to see if it pulls down to, I think it's rated for 20 microns. Uh, yeah, I can't is this really when see you that go ahead here, and turn this yeah, to the bottom? If it pulls down below that, 26 it looks like, then we got clean oil and we're going to keep going. Everything going good? I think that's something that's going to make more sense on. In on its, large, in its yeah. intended application. I think here it's probably not going to have much trouble. Right on. You guys know what, what you had charged in here? You should have coming out? Uh, we should have what's listed on the data tag. It says 5 6, we're stalled at okay. 4 14. Okay. All right. Did you actually shut the valve inside? Just 
curious. All right. Would you tell us if you did? No? No? Yeah, last year we opened this up and put a little ball valve so you can stimulate a restriction. He threatened uh -huh. to shut that down and seal half of our system off just to make this hard on us while we're going yeah. live. Yeah. Well, how, how's the weight? Did it look close to what the data player had? Close. It was off by about six ounces. Well, let me see if I got a nice line. Is you want to make sure you have, you have everything out of the bottom of that accumulator and your pressure starts coming back up. If you've pulled down and it's frozen down there, you're still going to have that liquid in the bottom of the accumulator oh, that's going to boil out a little bit longer. Uh, little, yeah, there's a little bit of frost down there. You might go a little longer to save right. yourself some trouble. As it, will, it will show zero sometimes right here at this port. Yeah. You have a little bit more pressure on your system. And then further back in where you have liquid, it's still boiling off at that point. And also, it's just kind of fun running that. Can we get a little uh, camera showing the camera here, please, on the live stream? If we can look into each other's yeah, eyes here. We're doing good on what time. What do going on? Wow, that's beautiful. That's a rare moment. Yeah, I'm glad we captured that. That was important. Yeah, that was a sensitive moment for Bob. Yeah. Does anybody around here want to talk about how they felt right there? I want to know how many people are watching this on YouTube right now. If you guys could all pull out your phones and log into YouTube and watch this so we have an audience. That would be that would be important. I want to see some comments. Yeah, it's, as long as I'm in there. It's live YouTube. You could see yourself on TV right now. We're pretty much locked at that four pounds, fourteen ounce mark. Yeah, I like I like to see minus fourteen psi. Yep. So we're we're already pulling a vacuum, so we don't even need the vacuum. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> So mine uh, will go down to minus 20 and start beeping at me. Be like, hello, we can do the purge now. Then I'll switch it over into purge. And... You got 32 people watching. All right, I got an audience. That's what I like, that's what I like to hear. It's going to be fun. How's that accumulate? So anybody that's just joining us, we are going to be actually testing the 2CFM battery powered Navac vacuum in a real system, real application. Uh, let's imagine we're replacing a compressor and we gotta recover the whole system. We got a unit here, it's our training unit, so it has been opened up lots of times and we've had you know, liquid probably in here. We might even have liquid in our oil, which would be a problem. We'll find out when we start to pull a vacuum on this. Um, so, real life application, What? How's this uh, 2CFM gonna, you know, hold up? Battery powered, so probably do your purge now. Fourteen six, and then what you do here? So what you'll do is turn it down into purge and push start again. Okay. And that'll take everything that's sitting in here, and you'll watch your scale. Suddenly, you're going to start moving stuff out of the coil that's in the compressor. And now we're it. now we're at our weight. Yeah, that's that's where the rest of that was hiding. And then you just let it run. Let it run until it stops itself. Yeah. So this thing holds a decent amount of refrigerant inside of it. Yeah. Yep, you got you got compressor. The larger the compressor coil, the better job this thing's gonna do. So, plan on testing that. Nice. We got to verify all our components are working how they need to before we use them. You happy with that, Bert? Let's see, let's see if Bryce checks the coil before we. I'm gonna show him. Better not. Hey, do 
a little uh, walk around, show some of the stars that are standing in the audience. We got, we got some good stars. Yeah. Right over there. Zach. He's already, he's got his camera out. Maybe. You guys, you guys might actually see some of those. For sure. Look good. Oh, Look here. Good. Come to Andrew. the camera. And some people just don't need to be okay, sorry. What happened? Did you test it? I'm about to. No, I mean the pump? I'm about to. Oh. Okay. All right. You should be good. So the next thing, what are you going to do next? You can talk next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and um, make sure our vacuum pump oil is good, which we looked at. But visually inspecting, it's not going to make much of a difference. We're going to pull a vacuum on our pump to make sure it comes down to the rated on the nameplate. Nameplate on this pump is 23 microns. So we're going to make sure that we can achieve 23 microns at the pump. have a vacuum hose out here yet? Uh, we were going to use the blue ones up top. We got them. Oh, you already got them. We're okay. Them. All right, so how's our... So as we pull a vacuum on the pump, we just want to make sure that we come to at least the rating on the nameplate, which is 23 microns for this particular pump. So right now it's pulling on your fittings, any moisture that absorbed into the rubber seals. And our gauge that has our been gauge. sitting on a display table all day open. Yep. <laughs> so. I never doubted you for a second. I, you know, I just had to feel it myself. You had to make sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get the vacuum set up. So we used. So I can pass it to people like you. Yeah. What do you have to say for what's going on here? Hey, um, this works really good if you go like this. Oh, wrong way. It's like this. Oh, we have a new star. All right. Yeah. Uh huh. Ryan Orr is taking I think I should. I think I should start a YouTube channel. Oh, that, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> you look good on camera. Your voice stinks, but you look good on camera. He thinks I should clip this on. It's not running. Really get right on. Do, it doesn't really feel. Right it, do, it feels more like Bob impressive Bob. if I'm holding a mic. Like, <laughs> like, so we're going to go ahead and put on these blue vac hoses. So we're going to do this right. I don't think you have a T. Are you planning on using them both? Oh, you uh, do. That one will take both. Okay. All right. Well, sorry, Jim. Say we're within the margin of error, just kind of casually observing. Oh, I need the yes. Team. Oh, yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. We've pulled down. 26, 27 microns. Yeah. I mean, if we need to change the oil, we'll we'll change the oil. If you think. If you want to change it over two microns. No. I'm going back to the booth. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're good then. Here. There's somebody watching the movie like. The oil. Show the status on it. Sorry. <laughs> right here. Yeah. So we've pulled down within two microns of what it's rated for. So, I'm happy. This vacuum's ready to go. And actually, no, I'm still, let's see, that one's good. I'm doing this back We'll just put the, no, we'll just put the gauge on the end here. Yeah, the, when you walked away, next thing you knew, two hoses came out. We were just so excited to use the hoses. We're going to hook two of these giant hoses to that 2CFM vacuum. Go. Yeah? You, go it's ahead, America. Go. We can do what we want, right? We can do whatever you want. All right. Oh. It's brilliant. That's one expensive whip. What, what do you charge a customer a whip that you've made out of a vacuum hose? Sorry, I ran out of my normal material, so I'm just going to charge you an extra $200 for this whip out of vacuum hose.
Not a vacuum. <laughs> Did not hit that button. Nice. I love this. This is so fun. I'm glad you did this. This is the complication you warned me about. Yeah, Bryce said before I decide I want to buy something like this, I want to take it off of a dry coil that was set up for display and use it like I would in the field. All right, and our vacuum gauge. I'm just turning that one up a oh, little bit so okay. I can access it. Okay. And Not that it matters. Oh, you have a T over there? We need to cap that. Yeah, I will. So maybe use the T. Use the T and stuff. Yeah. Well, you won't be able to do the yeah, decay test. Yeah, I won't be able to do it, okay? Right, my bad, my bad. Man, there's some there's some good voices over here chiming in. What's up, guys? Because we got too many people here. Hey, I'm not hey back there. paying enough attention to one thing at a time. Just like a customer standing over here. Mm -hmm. I know, look at that camera. That's when you zap yourself and you do stuff wrong and like make an idiot of yourself when you're, someone's standing over your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> That's normal, you want to stay for more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Why is that Nice. I was originally putting it in because I thought I was going to have to hook up there. That one ran out of batteries. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn on our blue back. Yeah. Can you hear me when I whisper to you, Austin? When I whisper instructions yeah, I don't know why live? Yeah, you're whispering straight in the mic. Yeah, why am I holding the mic so close when I whisper? Whoa, what's this? What's this? We're gonna go ahead and use our blue vac app to monitor our <clears throat> vacuum gauge. Holy cow, these people are going all out. Right. What are you guys charging a customer for all this stuff? I mean, it cost us two hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Each. Each. We're charging per man hour out here, so every technician out here. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and start our vacuum. This is a big building. Okay, those. Heating is just two sticks together. Boom! It's on. Someone mark the time. Eleven twenty-three. Eleven twenty-three. Okay. Talk about timing. Uh, no, we recovered so the the whole system back in. Uh -huh. And we got like an old oil in there and everything. Our vacuum gauge is leaking. Didn't seem like it was depressing the shredder. Well, okay. It'll take a little while. It takes a second, then kicks right in and starts to use their timing. And see, see if you watch this, it was doing something. It was like, oh, yeah. It usually take it usually takes about 60 seconds before, depending on the size of your system, before high pressure is going to go out. We are open, open to the entire system right now. Yeah, so we're pulling on the compressor. Yep, full of that PEO oil that has probably, there we go. probably moisture in there from how much crap this unit's been through. Yeah. Yeah. We do need to start the time over. I have a timer. We have a timer based on the back as well. Are you getting paid for this? Um, not enough. Actually, no. More, more than enough. <laughs> All right. He probably is watching Shaking this. Shaking his head in disappointment. Yes. Yeah. So we've been running our vacuum for roughly two minutes so far. Okay. Boom. We're below starting 25. To, starting to pull down. <laughs> That's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. All right, so anybody who's joining the live stream a little bit later, uh, Bryce wanted to test the vacuum on a real system. 
like as if he was replacing a compressor on an old unit and this one's been through so much trouble so we recovered everything from the whole system and then just now started the vacuum and take a look at the vacuum this is our 2 CFM battery powered vacuum that we've hooked up to this unit so he wants to see real life application is this going to work and it looks like it's not going to work now mind you our our battery time <laughs> is proposed to be one hour um, on the standard battery that comes with this 2 CFM right now we have it on a 9 amp hour battery which can achieve up to two hours of runtime. Mind you, we are at less than four minutes of runtime on this vacuum, and we're under 5,000 microns. We're currently dropping about 55 microns a second. Um, not this one. This one does not. Um, there are higher versions. Do. Who gave me these hoses and why am I holding them? Um, Andrew gave you those hoses. They can go back on the net. Okay, I need two competitors. We are going to do a hose fight. Who's up for this? You, you're holding the, the camera, but for the hose somebody fight. can beat on him. Try not to hit the camera. We need some entertainment. There's no cap in the other end of that. All you AC nerds caring about caps and open ends. Good grief. What do you do? Tape your copper ends after you cut it? <laughs> Four and a half minutes, 3,000 microns. This is what I do for all my trainees, and I understand this is not a training moment, but you just, once you've done this long enough and had so many problems, you can't trust anybody else ever, ever again with a single connection. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> so, no offense, Bryce. All offense taken. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. Okay, so now we're gonna have another fight. Hoses. <laughs> There's been a lot. Oh yeah, we got a fried lizard in there. Nice. And that it, it's probably still live. Does anybody want to pull the disconnect? Yes, mind everyone, it is live. So go ahead and pull the disconnect. Oh no, it's not live. You're safe. It is not live. Okay, so where would you like this as far as like good camera shot? I feel like he needs to be remembered. This is the kind of thing that is pretty sad. You never really see it in real life. And uh, here we are. Here we are in a moment like this capturing something that's, you know, once in a lifetime sort of thing that happens. So we're just going to, we're going to bury that. HVAC burial. Mm. You touched it and now it's climbing. Yeah, you're right. Did I mess it up? I think you touched it. You shouldn't have touched it. Ah, I did touch it. Mm. Can you not tell anyone about what happened? I did touch it. Yeah. It's alright, that means we're doing some work. What are you saying? Did so you do that right now? Yeah. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. It is a trainer, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's liable to be a lot of moisture in this system. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The problem is, is the ice ring on the bottom of the accumulator. We never really purged it with nitrogen before we uh, hooked up our vacuum. We could be starting to boil some of that out. I'm going to leave since I messed up the fittings. There we go. Now we're coming back down. Lower running in there? Probably. Yeah, that's the contactor was engaged until it pulled the wire from it. <laughs> <laughs> so 
got a brief moment of some gases flashing off from the accumulator. Yeah, this That's might why be. At this point, you go do other stuff and not stare at the numbers. Exactly. Yeah. It, it also might be an application where it would have been better for us to purge with nitrogen, um, or even to do that again and start restart a vacuum. So we might end up doing that if if uh, this doesn't keep dropping. And this is a real world application for techs because right. how many of your techs are going to actually on every job sweep it with nitrogen? Yeah. Especially some of your more rookie techs. No, this is a good example. Or your nitrogen's if you're out. Sitting on here that job. Yeah, if you're sitting here watching a vacuum like this, it might be because you're pulling on an accumulator that still has, mm -hmm. um, still has something on it, mm -hmm. and been a good or idea to purge with nitrogen. Being 410, it is hydroscopic. It's going to hold moisture in the oils. So. Yeah. As our lovely Jim Bergman told us, that um, you don't get that moisture all out. Mm -hmm. Good point. Here at one point in time. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this moment of calm in the middle of our project. Some of you watching the live stream might want to take a, a smoke break <laughs> right about here. Um, Sorry, yeah. I'd say go grab a beer, but it's still 11.30. It is, yeah. Go grab yourself a coffee. <laughs> I'd say for a 2CFM and its application, it's doing a very good job at this point. Cool. We've got a pretty good drop rate all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've got a really good drop all of a sudden. I think we're still flashing off that. Yeah, as soon as we get over the curve of what we're flashing off, it's going to start coming down pretty quick. And that's another thing is that with that happening, <laughs> you might run into a situation like this where you have a lot in your system and you need to change your oil halfway through. Yep. You never know. So you, once a lot of times when my vacuum goes down and then I see it start climbing back up again, shut everything off. I'll purge with nitrogen, change my oil, mm -hmm. and then start up again and right away just boom drops back down in there. Especially if you just finished up working on an acid system, so right? Like dirty. Yeah. Dirty. Yep. Mm-hmm. Another good lesson, when your system has had moisture or acid in it, you want to replace that accumulator if you can, and if not, at least dump it. Oh, it's in second stage now. Is that what happened? Yeah. That pump tightened up a little bit. Wow, that was cool. It just ma made a sound change. Now, mind you, how many pumps are that quiet? Um, none. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure the pump's none running? <laughs> awesome we're approaching 2,000 boom so now we're starting to drop we flashed off some of that that refrigerant sitting in an accumulator no we actually didn't purge it was a bad idea yeah like in this circumstance I would always do some high velocity nitrogen yeah yeah it makes it it makes a big difference and there's yeah. like it's one of those things that like everybody has practice adding, in the field it works it's adding turbulence to the system mm -hmm. and so when you're adding turbulence to the system and you're kind of breaking up that oil it's mm -hmm. not it's not nearly so much people think that it's somehow the nitrogen's absorbing moisture it's that's not what's going on it's that you have refrigerant and trained in the oil and the accumulator and the compressor and running some nitrogen through that just helps displace it yeah. Yeah. and it's just experience teaches you that it's not sure. a lot of people or like, oh, well, the pump's not pulling the hoses. It's 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 refrigerant in the oil. That's the issue that you're facing because this is not a wet unit. Of course, it is my training unit, so I shouldn't say that. Yeah, it very well could be a wet yeah, unit. Bert's worked on it a lot of times. So. Yeah, right. yeah, I have worked on this. So, yeah, no, it was a good lesson we went over that purging nitrogen. If you're running into a situation like this where you all of a sudden your vacuum gets stopped, 
somewhere. Yeah. Um, before you pull a vacuum, purge nitrogen through the system, flush it out, save yourself a lot of time. And we didn't. I mean, essentially, if we were doing a repair on here, I'd, I'd hope that we had pressure tested it. Yep. Swept yep. 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 Normally, the, the pressure test would have automatically been in there, so we're not. We, we this right a here step is, a, is kind of a worst case testing. scenario. You know, maybe your tech got there, it was empty on gas, and he just. Grading you more time. Exactly. Ah, I'm going to vacuum it. Yep, it's a good lesson. Friday, 6 30 p.m. 13 minutes, 1800. Okay. You ever use my vacuum pump? It doesn't show on here. Oh, I can call my phone to check. If I need the whole introduction, I'll let it go. And bear in mind, this is a 2 CFM pump, um, light enough to carry up the side of a building. Yeah. You don't need your power, you don't need your cheater cord, your widow maker, nothing like We've that. Got 57 people. So it makes, makes it a lot easier on a technician in the field. So we've had a, a lot more people join live, so why don't you just tell again why you decided to do this? So again, um, what I decided to do is put the equipment to the test in more of a real world application. Uh, we've been here for three days and they've been pumping down an equivalent to five ton system, which was a large coil of uh, yoga pipe. And on average, I mean, it was pulling down in a matter of five to six minutes at the most, um, however, that's a dry system. That's when your guys go install. They do brand new line set, all new equipment. It's going to be quick. You don't have much in there. Uh, this is to kind of represent a system that technician got to maybe change an expansion valve or a compressor or something like that. And um, now he's working with potentially fighting against refrigerant in the oils or moisture that's sitting in the oil and then the system hidden in the evaporator coil or wherever. And um, we're just testing it to see what kind of pull down time it actually has. And again, this is the 2CFM battery powered Navic pump. Um, it comes with a five amp hour that is capable of up to an hour of runtime continuous. Um, and the nine amp hour is an upgrade for it. And they say you can get upwards to two hours out of that battery. So what did we do wrong in this process? Uh, from the start, we, um, did not agitate the oil in the compressor. We did not purge nitrogen through the system. So this was just uh, pulled down, recovered. We ended up opening it to the outside air, and now we're eva <coughs> excuse me. Now we're evacuating it. Yeah. So you guys are witnessing us suffer with you live, um, just from the simple step of purging that system with nitrogen especially when you've opened up to the condenser accumulator we went straight from recovery hook up a vacuum turn it on nothing purged just cleaned out and and we hit once we hit 3000 we just boom we sat there for a long time going up back and forth between 3000 and 4000 as some of the gas still left in the system and the accumulator or the compressor was flashing off and then now we're back down and dropping again Nitrogen purge surely would have saved us some time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Classic. Where were all of you? Where were all of you when I needed you? You know, I'm, I got this mic. I can't think about stuff. Where was everybody when it, when it came time to be like, hey, nitrogen purge? Where are my peeps? We're like home on watching you. Yeah, I know. I do feel like that. I do feel like that. Huh? How much are you charging me per hour? Yeah, it's taking a while. <laughs> Anybody around here have something they want to say or add? All right. Good times. I did hear somebody back there earlier uh, offer up another point for stressing this, this test here, and I kind of missed it. But they wanted to see this in a little bit different of an application. Mr. Steve, can you tap that screen for me? Perfect. Uh, 
See, I wanted to put the 4 CFM to the test, and the Navic rep decided, let's go with the 2 CFM to show you. Yeah. Right now, our restriction to our vacuum time is actually our pump. Mm -hmm. um, we have the capacity with our hoses to increase our CFM rate on our pump, and we would actually have a little bit faster evacuation time right now. So Jim's prediction was, um, again, what was his prediction on how low we were going to be able to pull if moisture has been introduced to this? If moisture has been introduced to the oil of this system, he, Many times. he proposes that we'll be most likely sitting around 1,000 microns. Okay. He said it's going to be hard to get under that. Because the moisture will bond with the PE oil. oil. And the only way to get rid of that is with a fresh filter dryer. Good times. It's doing good though. So probably if I had already had the nitrogen sitting out here and I was in my work van. So we're now under 15,000, or 1,500, excuse me. Under 1,500, good. I would have probably by now pulled out my tank, flushed it a couple times. With, some nitrogen. with purging it with nitrogen, yeah, and then started it up. Because I already know from experience, a dry system is going to take me five, ten minutes with these hoses, mm -hmm. regardless of what pump I hook it up to. I like how you, when you see that threshold get crossed, all of a sudden it starts diving again. Mm -hmm. It hits another either moisture in some another level, refrigerant something sitting in another level, it hits that and it'll dry out, it'll stabilize for a little while and then boom, once Start it's, dropping once it's cleared that out of your system, yep. that's the awesome thing about having that, that app actually connecting to your micro gauge, you can watch that happen. And, and the wonderful thing about the Blueback app as well is, you know, it's, it's all recorded, um, all that data can be passed forward and saved to a PDF file. Um, you can even record your, your readings while it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking around. Who's getting paid to stand here? Must be nice, right? I, all I see is attendee, attendee, attendee. No one's getting paid to stand here. Wow, this is fantastic. You guys are all a bunch of nerds. You're still here right now. No YouTube. I just wanted you to check the live stream. Yeah, if you have comments or anything. Is there someone who can check on comments? keep kicking him and for some reason he's bothered by this like you know how many people would pay big money to be kicked by me wow that's cool comments yeah any questions steve's over here monitoring the comments right now all right steve okay all right wait we got some Mandu uh, 530 says, call it good, charge it, beer can cold. Mm, okay. That's not what we're planning on doing, but I get the feeling. Somebody <laughs> said Bert should be serving refreshments. Bert should be serving the refreshments. Okay. Not Again, gonna not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Any questions? Not yet. Well, if you're watching live and you have a question, what's happening, what's going on, why this, why not? Now's your chance. So we still steady? Mm -hmm. We're still steady dropping? Dropping, yeah. Yeah, we haven't come back up at all.
Good. What's that? T-Lex says, okay, it's time to bring out the 12 CFM. Right. <laughs> Uh, also, if you're using this, I mean, we've, we, we have live videos already in the application that you're installing a new system and you have a clean lines. You've already seen, if you watch the other live videos that we've done on this pump at this event, you've seen what it can pull down um, on a dry system too. So as an installer, have something this small that's capable of pulling your system down, a dry system within five minutes. That's pretty pretty hard to beat compared to my times in the field this is uh, still doing pretty good all things considered can you see that so this is the app we're talking about actually connecting with our blue vac microphone gauge and you can see the trend can I go back yeah and walk through it yeah I'm just looking at when we actually started dropping. Once we start stop boiling stuff out of our accumulator. Yeah. That was a good 21 minutes ago. Okay. All right. <laughs> right on. We might be walking away from this just so we can uh take care of some other things of the event, but um, we're going to leave the, the system running, we're going to leave the gauge on. Uh, we do have a time graph on the app, so it's going to indicate how long it took for us to get to any certain point. Mm -hmm. um, considering our practices today, um, this is not going to be the fastest that this can pull down in such an application. Um, we missed the nitrogen purge, but... <laughs> There's, yep. there's an argument against that. So, okay. Uh, with that one out there, you're to blame. Yeah, that's fair. So it, yeah, he said that uh, Bert was the last one to work on it, and that's why it's leaking and has so much moisture contamination. And I can attest to that personally. Um, that's absolutely true. But again, that's why we wanted this unit because we knew this one had been open so many times and stuff done to it and probably not every time brian's not watching this right is he is he on live probably we'll not. say no we'll say no probably not every time the line dryer was replaced did you, did you say that we ended up pulling out six ten eight ounces less than what yeah which is true which is true yeah we didn't so have actually we, have we isolated all to see if it shoots up like indicating a leak uh, no, we haven't, but we did um, we did hit definitely where the moisture was actually boiling out of the accumulator that we didn't fully finish recovering, and the fact that we didn't purge, and all of us who do a vacuum, we recover, we do our repair, we have our nitrogen to test the leak, we're already purging, so normal application we would have done that, just skip my mind in this side, so... We kind of scraped. We kind of scraped this together at the last second because yeah. I was the one that spearheaded this. I wanted yeah. to see it on a live piece of equipment. The the great thing that about this though, it's a good lesson for somebody who's trying to pull a vacuum. How much time you can save yourself actually doing each step in the process right. Mm -hmm. um, but another thing um, is that you could see immediately once we cross that threshold of about three thousand boom, then it started diving down into a normal vacuum process, so. Hey Bert, yeah. um, somebody asks, do you ever heat the liquid accumulator or compressor with warm water to help get the refrigerant out of the oil? Um, no, I haven't done that. That seems like a good idea. Yeah, no I haven't, just torches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> torches. <laughs> heat gun. <clears throat> Another question, why doesn't it matter no matter what pump you use? Um, the part where I said that, is that something I said? It's, it's not, it's not so much the pump. Okay. Um, you have limiting factors depending on what you're using. Yeah. Um, in this case, our limiting factor is the pump simply because we have more capacity available in our hoses right now to use a larger CFM pump and actually have this process moving along even quicker. 
Um, however, if you're using just your typical manifold or your hoses that would come on your manifold, you have a major restriction in those hoses that even your 2 CFM pump, anything over that 2 CFM pump, you're not doing anything. Um, 2 CFM at that point, your restriction to speed is going to be your hoses. Another person asking how much that Navac pump is? Uh, talk to your distributor. That might help too. You think you tighten it anymore? Yeah. You got another quarter turn out of it? Yeah, I got a little more than a quarter. I think it was actually hitting the top of the handle. Yeah. So Bert found another limiting factor. We were uh, apparently not completely tight on top of our pump and now we're dropping a little bit faster. I'm That's dancing good. when I move that. Mm -hmm. well, in other news, we've reached 100 viewers on the live stream. There we go. Okay. Now we need to just hit 1,000. Yeah. yeah. Great. All right. So let's let's hit it from the top again. So anybody that's joining the live stream, um, go ahead. So we decided. To, uh, I decided to do this. Um, I wanted to put one of the Navic pumps to the test. Um, on a live system, we've been pulling down what would be equivalent to a five ton uh, fresh install, new copper, new equipment. Um, it's going to be a pretty dry system when you pull it down now. This 2 CFM pump that we're actually using right here that you may see in the other videos, um, you'll see how quickly it would pull down your five ton equivalent system. Um, and now we're actually working with a system that has some oils, some refrigerant in it. Uh, we did not do a nitrogen purge on it. Uh, so we are missing a portion of the step that would have sped this process up considerably. Yep, yep, we didn't replace the line dryer. So we went straight from recovery into throwing a vacuum on because, uh, you know, we're just experimenting. We're having fun out here. This is and kind of so, a worst case scenario for when the pump gets put on a system, how long it's going to take. Yeah. And so there's things like you got a line dryer that's holding stuff in it that's had moist, been collecting moisture from when it's running and doing its job, but still sitting in the system. Uh, accumulated, it just had a recovery machine hooked up to it, no nitrogen purged through. And uh, we hooked on, and you could see that. You could see the vacuum not be able to pull a certain level for a while, and then it would drop past that, and it would stay for a little bit, and then pull another layer out and stay, so, yeah. So I think we'll hit that 1,000 micron by the time we need to step back toward the stage. Okay. Yep. Also helps to have all your connections tight. What's the name of this app? It's uh, Blueback Pro. So, yeah, Blueback Pro connects uh, with the Bluetooth micron gauge and then you track keeps track of your time and the vacuum rate and it stores it you can store it permanently in the in your app it'll actually keep track of the vacuums you pulled before when you need to pull that out mm -hmm. and it's awesome to see your visual patterns right there and now mind you these uh, these Navec battery pumps they do have an alert um, that will alert you when the battery is getting low uh, it gives you approximately five minutes to go ahead and uh, shut off your pump. There is a valve that will isolate your pump on the side. Uh, you can isolate it, go ahead and change your battery, turn your pump back on and open your valve back up and continue where you left off. Yep. Or your oil in this circumstance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I shut off the um, pump to watch the decay test to see what would happen. Because mm -hmm. we never did a leak leak detection or anything with this before, and it, it is popping up pretty fast. So you shut off the pump? Yeah, to the system, yeah. Okay. So right now we're doing a, just a quick decay test um, on the system, because like we said, we didn't do leak detection, we didn't do pressure tests before to see if the system was actually tight. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we are climbing pretty fast. That is a little concerning. So this poor vacuum's probably been working against, at a minimum, moisture in our line dryer, moisture in our oil. All right, open it back up to the vacuum. So what we're going to go do, go ahead and do is um, get back to different classes that we have going on in the event, leave this on, let it actually dry this system out fully, and uh, come back yeah, to it. we'll come back to it. Anything you, you want to add before we head out? Yes, sir. Thanks for joining us. It's been fun. Actually something real life. Actually, thanks everybody for joining in, giving advice. We needed it. There you go.